Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to build a simple F-sharp web API with a data repository using F-sharp and Giraffe. So previously we talked through how to create a minimal single file web API with F-sharp and Giraffe. Now this gets you off the ground with a simple web API, but it doesn't really offer a great example for how you might actually build a web app with this data and all. And really that's because it's just showing you you know, how to make endpoints and then it kind of takes in a raw string and returns a raw string, which is like fine for examples, but like anything you're gonna build that's, you know, useful or has substance is probably gonna need data. It's gonna be storing data. It's gonna be accessing that data. That's, you know, the core of what your web app um, provides. And so in this post, we're gonna be expanding on that minimal F-sharp draft web API to build common endpoints and data operations to give you a better idea of like how you might actually use this technology to build a web app of your own. And we'll be doing a series of these where we'll be slowly expanding on these, these web apps to um, you know go into more use cases. All right, let's talk about the web API overview. So in this post, we'll be focusing on data and endpoints. If you want more info about F-sharp draft itself, including like configuration and stuff like that, then check out my previous post, which goes more into that. Now this web API will be will have a very simple data model, basically just simple item which has an ID property which is a GUID. So so very simplistic, you know, more simple than anything you'd probably use in your own web app, but it should give you an idea of how the data flows through the system. We will build a data repository to hold our data and provide a central place for common operations on it. And so this again will be a simple version of this, but it'll have a create function which creates a new simple item to store. We'll have get all, which allows us to get all simple items. And then we'll be able to get one um, passing in an ID, which will get the simple item with a matching ID if it exists. So some very common you know, CRUD operations um, that you might have really focused on reading and creating. Again, very overly simplistic, but should give you an idea of how this pattern works. Um, so you can use it for your own data models and more advanced functionality. Now to access this data, we'll have three web API endpoints. So We'll just have a slash, which is then index, which will show us a count of simple items and all simple item IDs, slash details, slash ID, which will just search for that simple item with the matching ID, and then slash create to create a new simple item and return it. Um, basically just endpoint wrappers for these guys so you can see how the endpoints and data repository work together. Now I'll be showing you project code and stuff. Um, all the project files are available on GitHub here in my Hammy Labs example repos and this is available for, to all Hominians members. So we will be going over all the source code in here as well. But if you want the project files, so you can just pull it down and run it, um, that's available here. All right, so as always, I'm just a random guy on the internet, so you shouldn't trust me. And so I'm just gonna run this and demo it to you so you know that this is actually what's going on. Um, so here I am in my example repo. Um, here I am in my project, minimal F-sharp web API with data. And here I have program.fs open. And I also have my integrated terminal in this um, folder. And so what I'm going to do is stop the currently running one, um, do .NET run to spin up the web app, and then I will show you how it actually works. All right, so it's running. We can see that it's listening on port 5000, and we can go over to localhost and show you how this actually acts in the URL. All right, so here at localhost 5000, um, this will give us our slash index, which will show all items. This is an old one, so if I reload the page, we should expect nothing because there's nothing in my web app currently. So what we can do is come over here to slash create and we can do this a few times. Let's do it three times and it'll show us, you know, the item that was created. And then if we go back to all items and do this, we'll see that we have three items and each of these are the IDs for those simple items in our repo. And then finally, let's look at detail. So let's take one of these items that exists, come over here to slash detail, um, put it in the URL and we can see that we get it back here because it exists. And then here's an example of if it doesn't exist, this is just slash I don't exist, which is nonsense, not even a GUID, so it can't even be found. Um, we'll reload this and not found. So that's how the web app works. That's proof that it's actually working. And now we can dive into the code itself to see um, how it does that. So let's start off with building a simple data model. So now let's build the data model and repository. So first we declare a simple item, which is the data our web app will operate on. It's just a record with an ID property, looks like this. This is a record in F-sharp, here's its property ID of a type GUID. And then next we create a data repository. So this is a common pattern for handling data in software systems. It helps to isolate and centralize data access. Um, you know, one of the things that makes most software at scale kind of bad and brittle is that we don't have constrained mutations. And so this is one common pattern for constraining mutations on the data because data and mutations are really necessary and 
any substantial web app. And so the way that we do this is we basically create a simple item repo, which does a few things. So first it initializes itself with an empty list. Here we're just you know doing an in memory store, but you could imagine that if um, you're using databases, it will probably be a connection string to that database so it can access that data. Then we're gonna do a get all, which just returns all simple items, get one ID, which searches for the item with the matching ID, and then create, which creates a new item, saves it, and returns it to the caller. And so here's the code, but I'll open it up in my um, VS code so that you can actually see all of the code highlighting and stuff. Okay, so here we are in program.fs. Remember, this is a, a single file um, web app, so it's all in here. So here's my simple item that I showed you earlier, the record type we're using. Then we've got a little helper here, string to good option, which will show you what it does in a second. And then we have our simple item repo here. This is maybe too big. All right, so we have simple item repo. And I think these hints are making this hard to read, so let me get rid of them. And so on creation, what it's going to do is it's going to create this mutable all items, which is just an empty string. We can see it's a list of simple item here. Then we're going to create a member this.get all, which just returns all items. So it just returns this thing that we've made here. Then we're going to have get one, which is takes in an ID of string, and it's going to return a simple item of option because we don't know if we'll actually have it. And so what it first does, it takes the ID and it tries to turn this into a string to GUID option. Um, this is because this ID may not be real. And if it's not a real ID, then we don't want to throw it. We're just going to return none. It doesn't exist. We use option.bind, which basically means if this is none, we're going to do nothing. But if it is something, we're going to pass this in as an ID, which we now know is a GUID. Then we're going to look through all of our items and try to find the one with an, a matching ID. And then finally, for create, all we do is we create a new GUID. We create a new item which has an ID of that GUID. And then we just create or set all items to, to all items, but with a prepended new item here. And then we're just gonna return our new item just so that you know we give some feedback to the caller that like, hey, this is created and this is what you created. So that's it for the data repo. Again, all the codes here on the post if you wanna take a look at it. All right, so on to building endpoints with F-Sharp and Giraffe. So now let's look at our endpoints and how they interact with our repo to access our data. First, I'll show you how we declare our endpoints so Giraffe knows what to do when it receives a web request to the target URL. So it basically just has those three URLs. I already showed you um, them in action. Um, but just going over this again, so you remember, we have slash, which just gets all simple items. This is common for like you know an index page um, or something like that. Then you have slash detail slash ID, which allows you to dig into a single item. And so it'll search for a simple item with the matching ID. And then if it doesn't exist, it'll say not found. And then for slash create, it creates a new item and then returns it. And this is how we're populating our data model um, after we restart our web app. So here's the endpoints code. It's very simple. Basically, it's just a list of endpoints. Um, here we're saying that we only have get endpoints here. You could imagine if you have post endpoints and stuff, you would also declare it similar to this. And then we have another list of endpoints here that are all git. And then we have our slash, which is our index, which goes to get all HTTP handler, our route f, which takes in slash detail and um, this thing, which basically says this is going to take in a string as part of the URL, which is going to be used as a parameter. We know this is an ID here, and we'll pass that to detail HTTP handler. And then for route slash create, we'll send it to the create HTTP handler. This is pretty common in F sharp draft code to have a um, HTTP handler, which kind of gets a majority of the code out of the endpoint declaration. Um, this just keeps the endpoints nice and light, so it's very easy to see what's mapped to what. Now for a walkthrough of like how we actually hook up these endpoints to F sharp giraffe, and you can look at the full project source code or check out my previous post here, which goes into more detail about this. But basically, you know, if we have here as our declaration, then when we're configuring our app um, with ASP.NET and Giraffe, we are connecting it here in our configure app step. So we say dot use endpoints, and then we're mapping Giraffe endpoints here with web app passing in the list of endpoints. All of this configuration is like pretty complicated and so out of scope for this video. So check out my other one. I'm um, a few more details about this. All right, so that's the basics of this. Um, I also wanted to do a quick dive into each of these HTTP handlers just to like be thorough and make sure you understand how these are working. But essentially each of these is just mapping from you know the endpoint to the actual repo and returning. And so first we'll start off with like get all items, which uses this get all HTTP handler. This gets a count of simple items. It gets all the simple item IDs and then just returns these as a string. The reason it does this is just it's easier for us to return a string here. Um, and we want to give an overview of what's actually in the, the DB for, for ease of demoing. And so this is going to look a little funky. Um, but there's just a little bit of boilerplate that draft kind of forces you into. So here we have this handle context thing, which basically says that it's going to take in a context. Context is like access to the web request, so you can get headers and stuff like that. So most of the you know draft web requests that you're using are going to have this um, format. They're going to have handle context on the outset, then enter. It's going to have task, which this is how we do 
asyncs. And then inside of this, what we're doing is we're pulling out the count using item repo.getall.length. And then we're getting the string representation of this. So we're getting all of the items. We're mapping through this, turning them into strings of the IDs, and then we're concatenating them into a big list. And then finally, we're creating an index page string here, which is item count, and then just putting these together and writing the text out. Um, this return is needed for async. This is how we say that we want to basically await this context.write text async, and then we just put in the string here. So again, codes here, and for example output, you know, it's got the item count at the top, and it sends you know a list of all the items down here. All right, now for our detail handler, you know, just get one item. This is detail HTTP handler here, and it's going to take in an ID and searches the repo for it. This is probably more common to like a, a you know URL handler that you'll actually um, be writing because it'll take in some parameters from the URL to actually understand what it's what it's working on. And so that's here. And so the string which passes in here, and then we're creating the handle context inside of this again with its task. And all we're doing is we're saying looking at the item repo, getting one here, passing an ID, and then we're returning the text. Here, we don't want to return none because none stringified like this actually returns nothing. And so it's unclear if like, you know, the web app is um, working as expected or not. And so what we're doing here is we're matching the item here to determine how we want to serialize this. And so here, if we have something, we're just using F sharps built in record stringification, that's fine for us. And if we don't have anything, we're just going to say not found. So it's more clear to the end user that like, hey, the web app worked, we just didn't find your item. Examples of this are, are here below. So let's say we went to slash detail with this, you know, assuming this ID is actually in your um, repo. Then if we have something, it'll return this. And then if we don't have something, then it'll just say not found. And finally, we'll look at our create HTTP handler. So it should look familiar by now. We've got it here. We have our handle context here, task here. Then we create a new item on our repo. And then we just return um, the stringified version of the new item. So example output looks like this. Now for posterity, I have the full program.fs file here. Um, so you can, you know, look at the blog post, copy paste it, use it in your own app, whatever you want. And if you want the full project source code, including all project files, you know, again, so you can just grab it, put it on your machine and run it. That is available to Hemonians members here. And it's in my Hemi Labs code examples repo here. And of course you get like dozens of other F sharp um, examples as well. So here's the full source code. If you want to um, grab it yourself or take a deeper look at it, whatever. Nice. So there you have it, a simple web API built with F -sharp Giraffe that includes data operations using a data repository pattern. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of how you might build a web app that needs to process data, which is, you know, most of them, if they're doing anything kind of substantial. Now, if you want to build production ready web apps with F -sharp, I use CloudSeed to start all my F -sharp web projects this is my F -sharp project boiler player I've been building over several years, basically gives you a solid containerized F -sharp web app that also includes basic data operations, dependency injection, stuff like that. Um, and basically it helps me get up and running with a solid base for any app in about 10 minutes. Now, if you like this post, you might also like build a simple single file web API with F -sharp Giraffe. This goes more into the F -sharp Giraffe and ASP.NET configuration. So kind of the core of the app that we glanced over here. Um, so if you want to know more about that, you can check out that video. You might also be interested in endpoint routing with F -sharp Giraffe, which goes over more of the kinds of declarations we can use to say things like post requests, um, take format routes, um, actually pass in URL parameters, how do we access things from the context to get, you know, payloads and stuff. So things like that. And then if you're interested in more kind of like the data side of things, like here we used an in-memory store, what if you want to use like Postgres or something, um, then you can check out this video, which is getting started with F -sharp and Entity Framework. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.